Hey there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and today I'm going to share a Day of the Dead project with you today that you can also do for Halloween. It's a creepy little skull, it looks like a sugar skull. Blah! I crush your head. I don't know where I'm going with this, but anyway, it's a fun project, so let's go to the table and I'll show you how to make it. Freaky little skull face, blah! Rrr, grr. Kind of freaky with those rhinestone eyes, I have to say. All right, so this is how you make a little, I'm gonna put a magnet on that, I think, a little um, Halloween, Day of the Dead, whatever you wanna make it for, skull. And what I have here is some plaster of Paris. And I buy it by the big 25 pound bag, and then I just throw it in this like a little container that's actually, used to be a container that like a party thing of ice cream came in. So what I've done is I've got a little disposable cup about halfway full of water and I've put in, I'm not, you know, I don't measure it and I'll tell you why. Well, for one, I'm lazy. And, but the other reason is that I can give you measurements and if your climate is different, if it's more humid, less humid, it's not going to be the same. So what I do is I use warm water because it sets quicker. Um, I don't know that for a fact, but it just seems my observation has been that when I'm working with plaster, the, um, when I use warmer water, it sets quicker than cooler water. Put a little bit more. And I mix it up until it is a consistency of maybe heavy cream, probably thicker than that. Maybe like a melty ice cream consistency. Like this. You see how that is? It's kind of almost like joint compound, but not quite so thick. You want it to be thick so it sets up quickly, but um, you don't want it to, you know, be so chunky you can't pour it. So it's I like that. How's that? I'd say stupier than frosting. And then I'm just going to put it into my molds. Now these molds are great. They um, were a buck at the dollar store. The Dollar Tree, actually. So if you have a Dollar Tree in your area, you should have these. Be able to find these pretty well. And um, I mixed up too much plaster here. I'm going to scrape some of that over. Um, plaster is not toxic. You'll be able to wash these and use them again. These are ice cube molds, by the way, um, if I didn't mention that already. I've had eight uh, shots of espresso today, so <laughs> I may repeat myself or I may completely omit things that I should be saying, but, you know, watch the video, you'll get the gist. This is a messy project, hence that's why I was wearing my smock. Um, it's a great project for outside. I, in, fa in fact, if you're going to have the kids help you with this, you want to do it outside because it will make a mess. I tap it because it's going to get the air bubbles out and make it nice and flat across the back. And then you'll need to let that dry for about, um, you could probably pop them out of the mold in a half an hour, but might want to give it an hour. And then I'd let them dry overnight before you paint them. Okay, so the next step is, oops, I think I just got some plaster on myself. Um, the next step, they come out of the molds and they look like this. And you'll want to file off the edges, and I do that with an emery board. Just go and gently file off the edges. Very easy. And you want to do that to each one of them. Um, you can make five, no, ten um, skulls out of one mold, but then you can keep making it more and more as you want. Um, and molds are great because it's a supply you can use over and over again. They also have bones and fingers and pumpkins at the dollar store. I got the fingers and the bones. That was, that was one tray that had both of them on it. And I plan on doing some Halloween projects for those as well. Maybe if I have my act together, I'll actually post them on my blog when I post this video. That's a big if, though. Um, Alright, so those are all sanded fairly well. This one could use a little bit more. Alright, kind of wipe off the dust. And I'm working on one of my Dollar Tree mats. I'm telling you, I should just do ads for the Dollar Tree because I'm always getting my supplies there, it seems like. All right, this is the glitter paint that I made from uh, the glitter from papermart.com on my last video. So it's just Future Floor Wax and iridescent glitter, the really fine stuff. And um, the nice thing about the Future Floor Wax is I can shake it up to mix it and it doesn't make too many extra bubbles like regular acrylic sealer will. Um, there are bubbles in there, but they won't show when you work. So I'm just dipping my brush in and giving it a generous coat. And the reason, there's two reasons I'm doing this. One is because it's glitter and it's awesome! Um, okay, there's three reasons. Glitter and awesome. Um, also, the um, Future Floor Wax is going to seal in the plaster so it doesn't migrate onto my markers or paints. It'll be nice and easy to paint or color on afterwards. And three, because the glitter kind of makes it look like it's sugar, like the traditional sugar skulls. 
um, from Mexico from Day of the Dead. Day of the Dead? Is that what it's called? Isn't that a zombie movie too? Got zombies on the brain or something. Oh, I'm off on a tangent. What's new? Alright, so give every little scully head a coat of glitter glaze and let it dry for about 10 minutes at least. You can let it dry longer than that, of course. Probably longer is better. All right, now through the magic of television or YouTube videos, I've got some that are all glazed and aren't they just beautiful? No, no, they're bootyful. Boo, get it? Halloween, boo, bootyful, get it? Oh, never mind. Um, and so we are going to do a little decorating on these guys, and I'm going to use my handy dandy Bic Markets, and I'm just going to show you. Um, this is a set of 36. They're relatively inexpensive. I use them to do Copic techniques. I use them for, you know, everything you'd use a permanent marker for. They're just great. Um, and also I can let the kids use them and not be worried that they're going to, you know, damage them like I'd be worried with my traditional supplies. Now let me just hold this up a little closer to the camera. And um, I'm just going to freeform some little swirls on there. I am going to use a variety of bright, vivid colors. Not just bright, but vivid. Okay, I can't draw a flower when I'm holding it that close. After four cups, or no, eight cups of espresso, I can barely draw a flower at all. My hands want to shake so bad. Um, I'm going to add some polka dots. You can't even see that, can you? Let me... Maybe just do some... Little dots around here, really, you don't have to spend a lot of time, just kind of have fun with it. Um, I like the regular, um, the big markets look like this, not the ones that look like this. I thought I was going to use these fine tip ones. These are the fine tip, they have just the band of color on it, but they really, the, the, the bolder ones worked a little bit better. Uh, for this project. So just in case you're kind of at the store, you're wondering what to buy, I find the bold tip, the, well they're called fine tip, but they're not the ultra fine tip, and I find that they work a lot better for most of the applications. You could color in the teeth if you want to. You can really do whatever you want. It's still gonna look like a sugar skull. This is extremely hard to do while I'm holding it close to the camera. I should just zoom in, but I'm sure you get my drift. Maybe I can hold it up and draw a heart. All right, now I'm going to color a couple of rhinestones to stick in the eyes. And that's another thing. I buy these at the Dollar Tree, too. <laughs> they are uh, just round rhinestones, just plain old rhinestones. And I usually get like a bag of 300 or something. And then just take a permanent marker. Brighter colors work better. And just color them with a marker. And I'm choosing a color that matches my fingernail polish so that when I uh, accidentally get too carried away and color my fingernail, it'll, you know, match my manicure. It's probably already been destroyed by the plaster, but honestly, I'm not the type of girl that worries about her nails. Obviously, check out that one. It's covered with plaster. All right, so then I will use a little hot glue or my Helmar 450, and I'll stick it right in there. And voila! Spooky mini sugar skull! It's creepy and glittery and awesome. I hope you try it. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Ah!